maybe one of the biggest impact injuries, or two of them actually, I shouldn't say biggest, two of them. Anthony Davis looks like he's about to come back. Mm -hmm. KD is closer to returning, but Steph's on his way out. Steph yeah. looks like he's going to be out a little bit with, with the bruised tailbone. They were able to win last night, but right now they're tied for the eighth seed. How big of an impact is this injury to uh, Steph to the Warriors? Honestly, I look at this as a, as a blessing in disguise. You might, if, if, if I'm the Warriors, you know, barring, I don't know if they're looking how, how, you know, thoroughly they're looking into trades, but they do have some assets that they can trade away. Um, but they're not a they're not a championship team, and I'm not sure if there's a trade that they can make right now to bring someone in a superstar level talent that would help them. Where I could say, all right, I could see them getting past the second round of the playoffs. Like right now, honestly, the way the team is constructed, I don't even know if I feel confident saying they'd make it out of the first round of the playoffs. Because if you got to play uh, either LA team the way Utah is looking right now, because they're going to be at the bottom of the, you know, they're not, they're, I don't, I don't, I don't see them getting to sixth place. So now it's, you know, and I'm, it's to fifth place rather. So now we're talking about, about, uh, you know, six, uh, six and seventh and eighth. I don't see them getting out of the first round of the playoffs anyway. So this might be actually be a blessing in disguise and where, you know, listen, just, wherever the chips fall and just work on them draft picks, get you another high draft pick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got Wiseman last year. Maybe you can get somebody else, you know what I mean? This year, um, you know, it sucks because Steph was balling this season, you know, looking like Steph and looking like MVP uh, Steph. And this injury was crazy. It was kind of freakish because he kind of just tripped and fell backwards and he fell on his, on his, on his butt. But, you know, you wouldn't think that, you know, because you got a lot of cushion back there. So you wouldn't think it would have been that crazy. But, he's you know, he's going to be out indefinitely. You know, like you said, he did win last night. Um, but I don't think that's something that, that will be able to be sustained without Steph there. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not – Draymond ain't going back to defensive player of the year, Draymond. You know, and I don't – I just don't see enough from these other guys. As good as – I think Wiggins kind of changed the narrative on his career – being in Golden State, and maybe it's the culture there, the coaching, you know, where he was able to kind of turn things around. But even with that, I don't see enough there for for me to be like, all right, yeah, they can still hold it down and weather the storm. Especially if if you're talking about Steph is going to miss a two, let's say, even if if it's just two weeks that Steph is going to miss, the amount of games in them two weeks and and where you could drop in rankings from that point is just like, you know, is it really is is it, is it really worth it? So we might, maybe we might want to just, you know, kind of take this thing out again. Yeah, I, I don't think, I, I never viewed them as a title contender, um, especially without Clay. Uh, you know, we thought they could be a playoff team, but not a title contender. Um, I mean, for the fans, it robs us more than anything. It would have been exciting to see Golden State possibly in a first round series and Steph doing Steph type things and, you know, shooting and all that. And, and, the, and the legacy they've kind of built up there. But um, I think they're in trouble but I, I don't think it really matters where, the, where they land with the draft. I think they want to try to get into the playoffs. I think they want to try to reestablish themselves as a playoff caliber team. But let's not forget, they have Minnesota's first round pick. So, and Minnesota right now has the worst record in the league. So they're going to have a lottery pick regardless of what they do um, with, with their own team. They've got that Minnesota unless top, pick. Unless it's a top three pick. Right. So I, I think, well, they got the protections on it this year and then next year it's completely unprotected. So I, I think they're in good shape there no matter what. I don't know if they were going to make a big splashy move this year. I think they were going to try to wait it out and, and try to flip that pick later on. Like you said, Wiggins has turned his career around a little bit. Kelly Oubre has been a solid addition. And I think they were looking at it like, hey, if, if we can make sure Clay is fully healthy next year, maybe we take this pick with one of those guys and flip them and then have that core of Wiseman, Steph, Clay, and whoever we can go get. Um, but ultimately for the fans, we're the ones that get robbed because though I don't think they, they can beat the Lakers in the first round or Utah in the first round, it would have been nice to see Steph take on the challenge. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would have, I would have loved to see, you know, a Utah golden state series with Utah favored to win, but knowing that Steph could flip this series just by having a couple good shooting nights. So from that standpoint, we get robbed a little bit. Oh, fuck off. This is your African King's come, Michael Blackson. You're watching real fans, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Real 
Real 